Hello everyone, welcome to Brainwaves. Today on Brainwaves, I welcome back Dr. Scott Russo, uh, Assistant Professor of Neuroscience at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Dr. Russo is a 2012 Imro Johnson & Johnson Rising Star Award winner for his translational research. Uh, this research has included um, the study of mice and humans to, um, which has actually helped them to determine that the inflammation of the body as governed by the immune system plays a large role in our mental health. Notably, he's found that uh, an inflammatory protein called interleukin-6 or IL-6 uh, can predict the, if it's elevated in the blood, can predict the um, increased susceptibility to depression in the face of chronic stress. And he's worked with a pharmaceutical company to capitalize on the fact that inflammation is related to depression. Uh, to he's starting to develop new for, new drug therapies for depression based on this connection, and he's also beginning going to begin soon a study on the gut microbiome that is the bacteria that live in our intestines and how they can influence our mental health. So we'll talk to him about all these cool developments today. Um, uh, Scott, thank you so much for being on Brainwaves again today. Thanks, Brandon. It's a pleasure to be here. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, so my first question for you is, uh, you know, the news stories that I've read have made a lot of, of um, fanfare about your and Dr. Georgia Hode's discovery that the inflammation of the body as it governed by the immune system can influence depression in patients um, who have it and, and, and influence the development of depression. So uh, can you please briefly summarize how you and Dr. Hodes have learned what you've learned so far? Sure. First, I'd like to thank Dr. Hodes, who's really done an amazing job. She's a postdoctoral fellow in the lab that's been working on uh, studies related to the immune system over the past couple of years. And she's made a lot of progress since my uh, first application was reviewed. Uh, you were part of back in uh, 2011, I guess, for the 2012 Rising Star Award. And what Georgia has found is, is, is pretty amazing. There's been there's been uh, decades of work to suggest that the immune system and the chronic elevations and inflammatory markers such as interleukin-6 but also other uh, inflammatory signals like interleukin-1-beta are associated with depression. Um, this has been shown in humans, this has been shown in mouse stress models. Uh, what I think is interesting about Georgia's discoveries over the past few years is that she's really uh, isolated the source of interleukin-6 in our case to be from uh, white blood cells. And so she's identified a, a pre-existing uh, individual difference in the responsiveness of the white blood cells of the immune system to chronic stress or acute stress. Um, and she's found that this pre-existing difference is, um, is a cause of, of depressive symptoms. Uh, the fact that it's pre-existing, I think, gives us the opportunity to look at it prior to the onset of any mental illness, uh, and it may allow us to identify populations that are at risk, put them on um, prophylactic treatment, and prevent the development of the disease uh, altogether. So I think it's been pretty exciting over the past few years to see that. She's extended her studies now to show that a particular treatment that's being used for uh, leukemia, which is uh, bone marrow transplantation, can be effective in conferring uh, symptoms of mental illness. So it does open up the possibility, the future possibility, for uh, conducting uh, experiments to re-engineer one's own bone marrow to change this uh, hypersensitivity of the white blood cell. Wow, that's really exciting and and uh, and totally original. I mean, that blows me away to hear about that. So, because uh, that can help a lot of people, I think. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a new way of thinking about depression, and it's also a new way of thinking about treating depression. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, uh, I understand that you're working with Johnson and Johnson Pharmaceutical in partnership to uh, uh, start to develop new drug therapies for depression based on this interleukin six elevation. And the fact that an IL-6 blocker has worked in mice with antidepressant properties, you found. Can you tell us a bit about this research? Have you started it yet, or how is it going? Or we, We're just at the beginning phases of it, so there's not much to report yet. But we are hoping that some of the early basic findings in our rodent models 
will uh, tempt them to move this into uh, trials with humans. That's the, the ultimate goal, and, I, and I'm optimistic that at some point in the near future we may have approved uh, anti-inflammatory compounds for the treatment of major depression. I hope you can. <laughs> so I do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So congratulations on that so far. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, and then and then also you're now in a new direction for you. You're gonna branch out soon and start to to to, to study the gut microbiome, that is the bacteria that live in our intestines and how they can affect our mental health and perhaps our mood. What are your thoughts on, on this topic? I know it's a kind of a new, exciting topic in mental health research. Uh, you know, why why would the bacteria in our gut have an effect on our brain or our mental health? So it's an interesting new area. We have not initiated studies yet. We're we're hoping to uh, in the near future. Um, but it, the 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 gut environment, from our perspective, uh, the the interesting aspect of the gut environment is how it interacts with our immune system. There's well established interactions with the immune system, and that really that the appropriate it's it's not a a plus or minus thing that more or less gut microbes are good or bad, it's that the appropriate gut and bacterial environment leads to a healthy uh, functioning immune system. And so given our interest in the immune system, uh, it begs the question of whether or not a healthy gut environment can also promote uh, mental health through changes or regulation of, of the immune response. Uh, what's interesting is there's been a couple of, of, of nice studies out lately. Uh, one in which uh, the authors, I believe, uh, w the last author was uh, Dr. Jeremiah Faith, or one of the lead authors, and um, he showed that the appropriate gut microbiome environment can uh, mediate obesity. And so we know there's a lot of overlap and there's a comorbidity between obesity and, um, and mental illness, so there's a link there. And then a second, more direct study for mental illness showed that if you treat rodents with probiotics, presumably uh, uh, allowing for the colonization of these good bacteria, that you can promote antidepressant responses in these animal models. So the, the field is very young and everybody's excited but still uh, skeptical and, and ready to push forward with some uh, more mechanistic uh, detailed studies, but it would be interesting to think that we could someday treat mental illness by treating or converting the appropriate bacteria in your gut. Okay, uh, that uh, I mean that that is totally new direction again, and uh, that is exciting. Think about like things that we would eat or uh, could affect our mental health. I mean, kind of known that in, in kind of a general common sense way for a long time but uh yeah but yeah, yeah this is, is giving scientific validity to that idea and perhaps allowing us in the future to have therapies for depression and other mental illnesses based on that knowledge so that's that's really exciting absolutely and i think i say this every time i talk to you but the first line for everybody regardless of these scientific advances or new treatments that are available should be healthy diet uh, maintaining a uh, lean body mass and 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 exercising appropriately and and continuously those are the the first things that we can do to promote good mental health and and then we can go from there and consider uh, additional treatments as needed thanks for that scott I mean, that's excellent advice and i i, I use those those guidelines in my own life and uh no you yeah, do it yeah, helps. yeah they, they do help they do yeah, yeah. So uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? or? I think we've covered it. All right. Well, thanks so much for being on Brainwaves again, Scott. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it. Now, if people have any questions for you on the website uh, when I post this video online, uh, are you ready to answer some questions? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks again, Scott, and hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, Brandon. Take care. You too.